I never thought of myself as wanting to be a poet. Um, it's, it's not sort of, doesn't sort of, for me, it doesn't, ha doesn't happen like that in the least. But all my life, I did, in, with varying degrees of sense of possibility, want to make some sort of art. You know, I, I made, I did ceramics. I did, um, I wrote bits of novels and things like that. I painted and always painted and drew. And I, I just sort of saw at, um, at City University near where I lived that there was a poetry composition class and I enrolled and my life changed overnight. Um, Michael Donaghy was the, was the teacher, the tutor, and um, it, it, I'm, right, I'm right in saying my life sort of changed overnight. The funny thing is, is that everything I think I could say about my writing practice becomes redundant the moment I tell it. It's like every poem, you know, some poems are really, you know that thing where you sweep up the living room floor, you can't be bothered to get the dustpan and so you just lift the carpet and stip it underneath. Some poems get written like that. Some poems hit you like religious conversion on the bus. You know, um, and then you've got the poem. Well, it's not happened to me very often. Um, some poems are big, ambitious, fat things that you want some grand Alexander Popey thing to happen to you and to be able to really kind of set up some kind of monument for yourself, you know, ha, it <laughs> doesn't happen. It, every, poem's, every poem's different and also the stimuli and the methods, you can't generalise really. And also you haven't, you must avoid getting too sort of addicted to your own pernickety ways of doing things because they're not going to work another time. They work then. Like sometimes I write a poem, someone says, I'll tell you what you've got to do. You've got to write a poem about the relationship between your two dogs. And I really like instructions, so instructions are quite useful. My current collection is called The Mirror Bells and these are um, minute golden plums that um, are used to make a beautiful after-dinner liqueur called Mirabelle. And um, uh, that, that title comes from a poem that I wrote there about um, going to see an older poet and there being a tree in the street that had dropped its fruit all over the pavement. And the idea of sort of kind of learning something from somebody, from somebody learned, um, and then seeing some treasure in the street, because um, I'm, you know, food is everywhere in my poems, and sort of having something, not stolen exactly, but kind of got unexpectedly, and then of course they're forgotten, and I just go home and forget about these plums, although I wish I'd gone back and eaten them, and I could think about them for the rest of my life. And I think, I think um, that collection is very much a book about, it's experimenting. Um, it's experimenting with writing poetry. So, um, in some ways, I feel it's perhaps less assured than my first collection, which is called The Best Man That Ever Was. Um, there are things in that collection I love very much, particularly the poems inspired by my mother's letters. Um, and that part is called um, The Actual Pronunciations. Uh, she wrote a letter to me about living in America. They lived in upstate New York in a village called Rhinebeck. And she said, when you live in America, you live in America you, it's not just the words that you have to get right, it's the actual pronunciations. And I thought that was such a beautiful phrase. And, and yes, my father influenced me in many, many ways, continues to influence me. Um, he, he, he's a painter of great importance. His name is Lucien Freud. Um, he's not only a very important painter, he's, he's also enormously important in 
what you might call world culture. Um, and uh, when, I, when I was small and I used to sit for him, and it, these were long, long hours of sitting still, and he used to entertain me with the hunting of the snark and the bad child's book of beasts and the yonky bonky bow and uh, the owl and the pussycat and um, the rhyme of the ancient mariner and later the poems of uh, John Wilmot, Earl of Rochester. He was, he was, he had, he had in his mind a sort of personal anthology 